Namaste. So, where is everybody? It's time to start. You're all late. Should ca come right on time because I'm going to speak and then we're going to discuss and answer your questions. So if you miss the talk, how will you know what to ask questions about? See, this is not good. You know, so many people say, oh, I, I want to be your disciple. I'm, uh, you're my guru and stuff like this. But then when I make an event, where is everybody? They're late. So, you know, it seems like you don't really care about it. But I care. And so I'm always going to start right on the dot and like be there or be square. So today we're going to talk about the core, the root, the foundation of the esoteric teaching of Dharma Sar the essence of Dharma. What is the essence? Well, it has to do with meaning and consciousness. Let's take a look at our good old consciousness diagram. To lead up to it, I want to talk about why spiritual life is so difficult and often confusing for a lot of people. And the thing about that is, there's too many teachings, mutually contradictory and confusing teachings, and just too much information. People aren't able to go through and read and study. They don't have the time to do all the practices. So they just tend to narrow down their attention on one thing. And that one thing, of course, is not the whole path. It may be one step on the path, but it's not going to bring you to enlightenment without the other steps. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's just like you can't build a big building without a foundation. What is the foundation? But there are too many phony teachers, too many teachings that are just made up out of whole cloth. And people waste their time and energy looking into these different teachings, maybe practicing them a little bit, not getting any result, and then just dropping it. So this is a recipe for failure on the spiritual path. It's actually a disaster. So the key to spiritual advancement and enlightenment is recognizing an authentic teacher, an authentic teaching. And how do you do that? Well, we have to talk about meaning. Meaning depends on context. I like to give the example of uh, fill up the tank. Uh, you go in the gas station, fill it up. The word up has a particular meaning. In or into a conditioned state or position of completion or fulfillment. But if I say, you should just shut up and do your job, up has a much different meaning. It means completely. 
Shut your mouth completely and just do your work. So, the same word can have many different meanings depending on the context, depending on the meaning of the sentence that it appears in. And the same is true even more than in ordinary language and conversation in spiritual life. So in spiritual life, the context is going to determine the meaning of whatever teaching that you're investigating or following. Phony teachers try to narrow the context. They try to focus in on just one teaching, one method, one philosophy. And in that of course, they can churn out a bunch of materials. Huh? It's not difficult. It simply takes a little intelligence. But they can overwhelm you with information. But that information is very, very narrowly focused. Whereas an authentic teacher is going to widen the context, going to make the context as big as possible, and then gives you plenty of room to grow. For example, when I was in bhakti yoga, I was a student of Prabhupada in ISKCON, his organization. And they only taught actually karma yoga. They called it bhakti yoga, but functionally it was karma yoga because bhakti is completely spontaneous. Love is spontaneous. It arises all by itself. You can't force it. And to do so is inauthentic. It's bogus. So all their rules and regulations, all their rituals and their top heavy administration and so on was actually karma yoga. Do this ritual, chant this mantra. And they were forcing people to be devotees of Krishna. But I mean, there's so many different forms of God <laughs> other than Krishna. Krishna may appeal to a certain set of people, a certain particular taste, but there are many, many more tastes. So what about a teaching that includes all of those tastes? This is the Chatur Darshanam. I know you've seen this figure, this table, many, many times on our channel. Well, what does it mean? Well, first on the left, you have the chakras, the genital chakra, then the Dantian, or the energy chakra, the solar plexus, the moving chakra, the heart, emotions, the throat, speech and communication, the forehead, which is the intellect, the mind, and finally, the crown chakra, which is the seat of consciousness. And you also notice in between these groups of chakras, are the three grantis. Granti means not, knot, K-N-O-T. So the Brahma Granti is between the energy chakra and the moving chakra. And this is the knot of bodily identification. The Vishnu Granti is between the heart and the throat chakra. And it is the knot of emotional attachment. And finally, the Rudra Granti is between the forehead and crown. And this is the knot of attachment to concepts. So all these knots have to be penetrated before one can attain full enlightenment. And to do that, there are four views or darshans Darshan means to see. So to see the world and God, 
There are four different alternatives, and they are linked with these groups of chakras separated by the grantis. Dvaita Vada. Dvaita means duality. And in duality, the world appears real. The body seems to be the self. And the yoga for the Dvaita Vada is karma yoga. This is why the ISKCON devotees were so much into karma yoga because their philosophy is completely dualistic. And this karma yoga and this view, Dvaita Vada, are associated with Jagra, waking consciousness. But then there's a higher state, Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Vishishta Dvaita means conditional or conditioned. So conditioned duality is Bhakti Yoga. It's conditioned by a particular rasa or mood and emotion. So that's why it's centered on the solar plexus and heart. Solar plexus deals with uh, sensation and feelings. And the heart, of course, is emotion. And this is associated with svapna, or dream consciousness. Then there's the vivarta vada. Vivarta means meditation. Vivarta. And Raja Yoga, the yoga of meditation, is the yoga for that state, which is associated with sushupti, or deep sleep. And this is why meditators try to attain emptiness, nothingness, complete silence, and samadhi. And when this practice becomes mature, that leads to the ajatavada. Ajata means unborn. In this view, the world is seen as non-existent, simply an appearance, a temporary mirage. And this yoga is called jnana yoga. And the consciousness connected with it is turiya. We talked a bit about turiya in the last live stream. So these are the four views, four yogas, and the four states of consciousness which are connected with these four groups of chakras. So now we have a few viewers. Well, we did. Now we're back to one again. You know, <laughs> I don't know what it takes to get people to attend or participate in these live streams. But the average view is only like a minute and 14 seconds. How are you going to learn anything that way? You have to have some discipline. You have to have some stick to itiveness. So no questions? Well, then I guess I can just take a break. <laughs> Nobody has any questions? Unbelievable. See, I've been teaching this Chatur Darshanam for three years now. No, four years. And in all that time, nobody has made any comments or discussion that indicate to me that they got it, that they understood it. Seems to me it's just a big misunderstanding. And, and nobody really gets it. But this is the core, this is the root, this is the basis of our teaching. If you don't understand this, nothing else is going to make sense because it's out of context. And as we talked about in one of our very earliest series on uh, becoming genius, 
or matrix learning. It has two different names. When you're having trouble learning something, it's often because you're holding it in the wrong context. I'm still waiting for questions. See, I'm tired of doing these lectures. It's a one-way flow. I want an exchange. I want a two-way flow. You can drive this thing with your questions. You can determine the directions that we're going to take it by your doubts, your misunderstandings, your questions, your reactions, your responses. But if you don't show up and communicate, I have nothing to go on. So I thought I did a good job of promoting this thing. I guess maybe I didn't. Why? Or why not? <laughs> Is anybody showing up? Well, we're up to three whole viewers now. Let's see if any of you guys have questions. Come on. Don't be shy. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to wait a couple another minutes, and if there's no questions, then uh, I can just uh, end it here, uh, because the, the reason I'm doing this is to give you a voice in this teaching. And if you don't want to have a voice in it, well, what can I do, you know? I'm not inspired to do these lectures anymore. I've said everything I had to say. There's 1,150 videos on this channel. And they're all this lecture format, which I'm completely burnt out on. Last time we had some good questions. But now, Everybody's just scared, chicken. It's very disappointing. So, okay. This is your chance to shine, and if you don't want it, what can I do?